My name is Mike McNagray from UCLA, and this presentation is collimation versus slice width, dose, and scan time. I'm talking about some of the trade offs. Uh, these are my disclosures. Um, collimation. Let's start with collimation. Collimation affects several things, including the total scan time, it affects noise, and ultimately the low contrast resolution, and often it affects the thinnest available reconstructions that are available. Um, that are going to be used for um, reformats such as coronals and sagittals. Um, please note, rec we recommend using the thinnest channel widths possible for the best image quality. Some configurations, especially the narrow collimations, are less dose efficient. Um, this can be vendor specific. So please note that sometimes there will be a little trade-off if you go for the narrower collimations. There will be a little loss of dose efficiency, but you can compare this relative dose using CTDI vol on the console because this will reflect um, these changes. Um, when you look at collimation versus slice width, the 4, 8, and 16 row scanners, they had significant constraints in terms of what image thicknesses could be reconstructed from a given configuration. Um, 64 and above detector row scanners Many of these constraints go away, but they still may exist, especially for very thin images. So the amount of choice that you have can be extensive, and I'll try to illustrate that in a minute. So here's one example. The Siemens Sensation 16 had two configurations for helical scans, 16 by 0.75, which was a 12 millimeter nominal beam width, and you can see that it allowed very thin slices, 0.75, 1, 1.5, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 millimeter thicknesses. So you could get very thin slices, but it had less coverage, only a 12 millimeter beam width. In the other configuration of 16 by 1.5, the 24 millimeter beam width, it only allowed 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10. That is, you could not get the 0.75 or the 1.5 millimeter reconstructed slice width. Gave you greater coverage, but the thinnest reconstruction slice width was 2 millimeters. So there were some trade-offs in those 16 um, detector row scanners. As opposed to the Siemens Sensation 64, the configurations for helical scans are much more flexible. At 64 by 0.6, which should be noted is using the Z-Flying Focal Spot, it's a 19.2 millimeter nominal beam width. It allows 0.6 and 0.75, as well as one and thicker reconstructed uh, image thicknesses. So thin slices, but a little less coverage. In the 24 by 1.2 mode, which is a 28.8 millimeter nominal beam width, it does allow th thicknesses down to 1.2, not sub-millimeter, but down to 1.2, 1.5, 2, and above. So there's greater coverage, but the thinnest um, reconstructed image width is 1.2 millimeter. That may be sufficient for many applications, including many that are looking for sagittal and coronal reformats. But if you need those 0.6 or 0.75 millimeter thicknesses for the reformats, then you need to go to the 64 by 0.6. The significance is your, this can influence your ability to prospectively choose, uh, that you prospectively have to choose the collimation that allows the desired thicknesses to be reconstructed. If thin slices are needed, you have to choose that collimation setting that will allow the required slice thicknesses. And know that those thinner collimation settings are almost always less dose efficient. Um, this will have some impact on the total scan time. And the question then is, is that important for a specific scanning protocol? Uh, that depends on the body part, the study, and the scanner involved. Um, as in, specifically, are you worried about breath hold? Are you worried about timing with respect to contrast? Um, what's the indication? What's the scan that's being performed? Um, the effect of, of a collimation on scan time, uh, for example, in thoracic CT, you definitely need to complete that acquisition in a single breath hold to eliminate a respiratory motion typically 10 to 15 seconds maximum, depending on the patient's disease and severity, and you need about 30 centimeters or 300 millimeters of coverage. So the collimation can have an impact on that. So for example, if your thoracic CT done on the Sensation 16, here's one very specific example in a 16 by 0.75 millimeter mode. That's a 12 millimeter beam width. For pitch one and 0.5 second rotation time, you can see the table feed there is 12 millimeters per rotation. When you look at the table speed, including uh, factoring in the rotation time, you get 24 millimeters per second. 300 millimeter coverage takes about 12 and a half seconds. If you do a pitch of 1.2, that'll get it down to about 10 seconds. 
If you compare that with the 16 by 1.5 millimeter mode, you get about twice the coverage, and that scan at pitch one takes less than seven seconds. But the thinnest slice is two millimeters. So you can have a very thin slice at about a 15 second scan, or a not quite so thin at about a seven second scan. It depends on what the goals of your study are. So you have to look at the requirements of the study protocol. Do you need the thin slices? Are you okay with just axial reconstructions? Or do you need coronal and sagittal or multiplanar reformats or 3Ds? Um, one example of this trade-off extended a little further is high-res chest for diffuse lung disease. This can typically be done in one of two ways. The traditional high-res CT was a sparse sampling protocol. You scan through the whole chest, but the axial scans are one millimeter thick, but they're spaced every 10 or 20 millimeters. An increased sampling protocol would be to do a full chest helical scan with a one millimeter thick slice reconstructed spaced every millimeter. For helical, here the thin section images are needed for the diffuse lung disease, so you need to choose a collimation that will allow one millimeter thick reconstructions. For an abdomen pelvis or chest and pelvis in a single pass, you need lots of coverage, five to 600 millimeters in abdomen pelvis, up to eight or 900 millimeters in a chest abdomen pelvis, typical. They, of course, they can be longer or shorter. If possible, in a single breath hold, at least through the chest, preferably through the abdomen as well, so you're not getting liver motion. IV contrast, timing can be very important here as well. So the impact on scan time for an abdomen pelvis or chest abdomen pelvis, again, in a semen sensation 64, and a very specific example, the 16 by 0.75 millimeter mode yields 12, mill 12 millimeter beam width, for pitch one and a 0.5 second rotation time. Again, you got 12 millimeters per rotation, 25 millimeters per second. That 500 millimeter coverage takes about 21 seconds, maybe a little bit longer. If you take the pitch up to 1.5, you can reduce that time down to 14 seconds. 800 millimeter coverage takes more than 30 seconds. You can get that down to pitch 1.5. Um, if you use pitch 1.5, you can get that down to about 23 seconds. It, again, it depends on um, what the goal of the study is and what the requirements are in terms of breath hold and, and contrast. Um, um, if you do this in the 16 by 1.5 millimeter mode, you get twice the coverage. So the same kinds of parameters, pitch one, 0.5 second rotation time, that now you have 24 millimeters per rotation, 48 millimeters per second table travel, so that 500 millimeter coverage takes only about 10 seconds increasing the pitch shortens this to seven to eight seconds. 800 millimeter coverage gets it down to about 17 seconds and pitch 1.5 shortens that to 11 to 12 seconds. But again, greater coverage, but the thinnest slice available in this mode is two millimeters. And the question is, is that acceptable for the study that you're being, that's being performed? Okay, how will the images be viewed in that protocol in the abdomen pelvis or chest abdomen pelvis protocol? Are coronal, sagittal, or multiplanar reformats going to be required? Um, if you're only going to view five millimeter thick images, um, then the wider collimation, which is more dose efficient and can give you greater coverage, that can be used very nicely here as well. Uh, what about the choice of MAS level? If thin slices are going to be used, well, sometimes the MAS level chosen um, may or may not provide a low enough noise. So. When you use thin slices, you have to be careful about your choice of MES um, because those thinner slices will have more noise. You'll have to increase the MES uh, to offset the noise, or you're going to have to live with that, that increased noise. If only thick images are going to be used, then a lower MES can be used because those images will be less noisy. Those thicker slices have more photons in them and less noise. Let's take a look at some example images. These are from the same acquisition. This is an adult abdomen image. Going from the left, you can see there's the five millimeter image, or image reconstruction, from the same acquisition now, same patient. As you move to the right, you can see the three millimeter image, and you can note there's more noise in that image, and when you take it down to one millimeter thick, um, you can see there is even more noise going in here, okay? It's the same technique, it's just a different image reconstructed um, thickness. Um, same thing different level, five millimeter image on the left, three millimeter in the center, one millimeter on the right. Again, less volume averaging as you move to the thinner slices, but more noise. 
even lower down in the abdomen at the level of the kidneys again five millimeter on the left three millimeter on the right oh, sorry three millimeter in the middle one millimeter on the right and you can see the increase in noise these are very uh, these images are very good quality you can see a lot of anatomic detail it just depends on the goals of the study uh, again if you look at the adult abdomen images um, here's the five millimeter and here's the three and here's the one just illustrated um, in sequence so you can appreciate um, in sequence the increase in noise as you go to the thinner images same thing five millimeter image three millimeter image one millimeter image you can really appreciate the increase in noise here in diffuse lung disease this was a pediatric uh, patient that was done at a very low technique and you can see how the increase in noise here is really almost obscuring the ability to diagnose the presence or absence of diffuse lung disease because of that increase in noise. Um, this can also be an impact with um, lung nodule detection. Here I have four images reconstructed with two different reconstruction filters. Um, you can see the lung nodule, it's that uh, crescent moon shaped object right there in the, near the center of the image. The top row is done at the original dose. Um, the bottom row was done at or simulated at a reduced dose image and you can see how the um, both the algorithm and the uh, the dose level can influence the amount of noise and the appearance um, of that nodule uh, in the image. This is a this next example is a, a, a image of a device a physical device that was scanned under different um, different conditions. It's actually a, a tube with some small uh, mesh around it. Um, this is actually a, a, a bronchial valve um, that's often used in um, treatment of emphysema. So you can see the cross-sectional images um, at 1.5 millimeter thick. Uh, and here, these were reconstructed, the same object, reconstructed with 10 millimeter thick slices. And when we do a multiplanar sagittal and coronal using the 1.5 millimeter, you can see the details of the valve um, now in the coronal and sagittal images. In those same images, in the next slide, you can see how blurry they are because of the partial voluming when they're reconstructed from the 10 millimeter thick slices. So there's a lot more detail when you reconstruct originally in the thin slices before you do your multiplanar reformats. This extends to um, anatomy images. On the left, <clears throat> you can see coronal reconstructions um, that were originally done from 2 millimeter thick slices on the left those same patient coronal reformat based on 0.6 millimeter uh, images on the right. And you can appreciate both the increase in noise. For example, if you look in the abdomen, you can see the lack of definition in the abdomen on the right-hand image where you've reconstructed from those 0.6 millimeter images because of the increase in noise. But you can also appreciate an increase in the detail from those 0.6 millimeter images, for example, in the airways and in the lung detail uh, on the right-hand side images. Here's another um, set of images from the same patient. Again, on the left, reconstructed this coronal view from 2 millimeter um, images. On the right, reconstructed from 0.6 millimeter. Again, increase in detail, but also in increase in noise from those thinner images. So collimation and reconstructed image thickness, they affect several different things. The total scan time. Um, they affect the thinnest available reconstructions available. The, both the noise and low contrast resolution are affected and the quality of coronals and other reformats. There are some implications for dose. If thin slices are used, there may be a temptation to increase the MAS to compensate and reduce the noise. So the question is, are the thin slices needed? Are they needed for the diagnosis? Or are they needed for reformats? And also, is the proper reconstruction filter being used? And typically, when narrower collimations are used, it's less dose efficient. And that's the end of the presentation. Thank you.